Yeah. But if it was affordable, it might be a good idea because, I mean... Well, look, I mean, most, you know, let's, let's face it, most beneficiary families are in poverty. Yeah. Um, most, uh, or, or a good proportion of those people in poverty uh, who are working are on the minimum wage. Mm. Um, That's right. So. And, and, you know, and I actually think that, the, you know, the minimum wage, this is one of the, our, our policies yeah. that I just, just so believe is the right thing to do. I mean, if, you, if you're on 13 bucks an hour, I look, you, you do the calculations, mm. I don't know yeah. how anybody can but, afford but to live on it. I, I yeah. totally agree, but is 15 enough? 15 well, bucks an hour? I mean, I'm not yeah, sure well, I could live on 15 an hour. Well, the other, the other possibility, and this is put forward, and I know it's been talked about, and I think it's worth a, worth a conversation. Um, yeah. It's not part of our policy, but, you know, is, is, is somehow linking the, the minimum wage yeah. to sort of the average wage. Because some people have that. suggested, yeah, putting it at two-thirds. The, yeah, with the superannuation. Yeah, is, and, like that. You know. So, personally, you're kind of sympathetic towards Well, that. I'm sympathetic. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to come out and say, you know, you we're watching three weeks out before yeah. an election campaign, but, I, but I, I think we need to have the conversation. I mean, and I don't know what the cost would, and I don't know what it would be, mm. how, what the impact would be on business and all those sorts mm. of things, but I do think that um, it was also an, an important um, aspect for the, for the rest of the economy, because I think that our economy can't be um, a, an economy based on cheap labour, mm. um, and, and I do think it makes us look at product, labour productivity a bit more, yeah. a bit more carefully, and, 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 and perhaps capital equipment and things to make things you know, and that might move because that's the argument, market. isn't it? That because we've ended up with a slow wage economy, manufacturers or all sorts of employers don't need to invest in capital to increase productivity. Yeah. And yeah, I think there's so, a sort of a self-fulfilling yeah. pro prophecy that you end up sort of grinding down to the down to the bottom, um, uh, which is you know is not desirable for for New Zealand's productivity. Okay, so I guess coming back to your beliefs and ideology. Now, where would you put yourself on, say, the political spectrum of the left to right thing? Are you a centrist or a left winger? Or I always find it a little bit difficult uh, where, where I fit, to be honest with you. I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, things that you just heard me talk about yeah. would, put, would put me sort of centre left. Well, I'm, I guess my, my you know, I, I believe very strongly in having strong businesses to grow our economy. I mean, it's, it's what grows our economy. We have to have that. Mm. So I'm sort of pro business from that point of view. And my portfolio area in uh, research, science and technology, uh, that's an area I think we're, we're not doing enough in. Um, when I see the companies that I've gone to see over the last, uh, last couple of years doing remarkable stuff and finding it really, really difficult. Um, so I guess somewhere in about that centre, left, right, depending on what the topic is really, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so... Is that, is that I, I, vague enough? <laughs> yeah, I, that, okay, sure, I mean, it, it is difficult, but yeah. what, I guess about, what about terms that we use, like social democrat, or um, does, do they yeah, I guess resonate I, with you? Yes, or? I guess a you know, social democrat would be, you know, and I, I mean, I like looking, I like, I, the, the countries that I look to, for example, are the, mm. our Scandinavian okay. countries. I mean, if you were looking at Denmark or Finland as, a, as perhaps, Everybody says Australia. Um, I actually yeah. think Australia is a different economy, possibly different aspirations, different way of looking at their environment, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, actually, in some ways, I think Australia and New Zealand, we, we might have started off at the same roots, yeah. but actually the branches are going further and further apart, and, uh, um, I think, in some ways, where I think these are the smaller countries mm. of you know, Denmark or Finland or you know, mm. uh, are, are perhaps the ones that we could... Um, respite, particularly economically, because I okay. think that's where our economic future lies, lies in those sorts of areas. Okay, that's interesting. So do you follow kind of policy and political discourse and debates about things like the third way and do you, is that, no, something Yeah, like well that? I was in the UK when a lot of that came yeah. out and, 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 I, and I, it had a certain amount, it's got a, a lot of certain, a certain amount of appeal and I think it's, you know, got tarnished a bit um, with, with you know, Anthony Giddens and everybody else kind of going in different directions. But if you look at, um, you know, if you look at somebody, um, I mean, one of my uh, kind of heroes that I've read about is a guy called Axe Aho, who was the Prime Minister of Finland in the, in the early mm. uh, 1990s, when Finland joined the, uh, well, was, Finland was, was trading very heavily with the Soviet Union, and suddenly the Soviet Union didn't cease mm. to exist. <laughs> and um, suddenly Finland's, their, their um, their unemployment went to 20%, their, um, their inflation went to 10%, their economy effectively nosedived. That sounds like something similar. Well, yeah, what, yeah. And this, is, this is why I found it kind of interesting, and, and, but it happened though, very, very, very suddenly. Mm. And Aksa Aho came in, uh, I think he was centre right, right, not centre left or whatever, but he was a young guy, he was 35 years old, came in as the Prime Minister, um, made some big changes. 
but he invested in two things, education and research and development. 70% um, increase in the research and development, for example. It took off, he's now the director of no one of the directors of Nokia. Uh, one of the, Nokia was one of the beneficiaries yeah. of, of his policies. And, 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 and Finland went ahead. He got voted out um, four years later because the medicine was, was pretty, pretty strong. Mm. Um, but you sort of ask, sort of ask yourself, I mean, you know, here was somebody that came in that recognised the problem, Finland recognised that it had a problem, and it recognised that its future lay in its people and its brains. And I think we don't recognise the problem. We sort of think that this glacial decline will somehow change, uh, that somehow Asia will dis discover, you know, milk powder, more, you know, whatever. Yeah. And somehow we're going to ride that, those coattails. Well, actually, I don't think that's a strategy, and it's just avoiding the big issues and the vi issues okay. for the future. Okay. What other heroes do you have, or what other sort of uh, <laughs> uh, leaders in the past or present have kind of inspired you or given you make, made an impression on you? Then I mean, I think for, for me, it's not. I don't think there's the sort of one. I mean, I think yeah. there's 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 like, you know, the bits and pieces from 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 different um, leaders. I mean, I thought Longy's ability at the big, at the big, certainly at the beginning of, of his time to lead that. There was that wonderful feeling that you were all together and New Zealand was moving again and, 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 and that motivational type of thing was, I mean, particularly I was, I was pretty young at the start, that time and I guess I got sort of carried away. I mean, obviously, you know, um, Helen, is, Helen Clark was, it was, it was also extraordinarily smart across you know, so, so much. But I, I guess if the couple of things for, for me with, with Helen was, was her political courage on issues. And I, one particular one was a tamper refugees and I was working at that stage with Phil Goff in his office and um, actually it was, it, was, it was really funny because we happened to be in, in, in Australia at the time, we'd met with um, Howard and, and we we'd just, Helen Clark had just announced that we would help get the, mm. fem the women and the children at least come to New Zealand and Howard was two weeks out before the election mm. um, and this was his biggest problem and he was losing. Mm. And we helped him out of a hole. And he came up to us at this uh, at this football game. I remember we were at. And he came up to me and said to Phil, "Phil, I just can't thank you enough for what you've done." Which, and Phil sat and turned to me and said, "What have we done?" Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we basically got um, John Howard re-elected. Um, yeah, which, <laughs> well, not not single-handedly, but um, we, we certainly contributed to it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, refugees. Obviously, you've dealt with <clears> this as one of your big areas in your yeah. life before Parliament. Do, does New Zealand take enough refugees? I mean, what do we take? Seven hundred and fifty? It doesn't. Well, seem we like take we take seven hundred and fifty, but we we have actually have been well below that for yeah. the last few years. So actually. why is that? Yeah. And um, I, I honestly am, am not 100% sure. I think the breaks have gone on a little bit. I, I mean, Christchurch had a, had a bit of a play in that. And, but even that, you know, you sort of think two or 300 people. Well, not the people that I see in, in, the, in the positions that they're in, um, and many of them are actually um, are in real, I mean, obviously in desperate need, but they're, yeah. also, they're also, many of them are, uh, have to get out of their countries because they're educated and they, they dare to stand up and say, you okay. know, this is wrong. And, and then they, and they had to flee. And I, and I actually think that our refugee population has actually done New Zealand a, a service rather oh. than a disservice. Yeah. And, 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 so I, and I think people mix up the other refugees that often come are here that somehow get in and, and, and stay rather than the, the pure refugees that we take on. What do, you yeah. think, what do you think will happen in the future with the like, climate crisis and Pacific refu like, climate refugees? What was that being a really like, mm. contentious kind of definition in itself and then well I think for, the, for example in the Pacific we're gonna we're gonna have to um, you know gird ourselves for that because I think you know Tuvalu mm. um, uh, you know Tokelau's some of those are go we're gonna we're gonna be picking up a lot of the of the, of the issues around that and I think that's a there's a real challenge there because at the one hand yes we can be the the place of resort um, of I guess what's the, what's the word but I mean, the, the place where they can come to um, sanctuary or whatever, but the 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 real issue is how do they, they then they lose their identity, and so how do how do we how do we work around that? Where are there places to go that if they're if they're I mean Tuvalu for example at the moment is a is a real problem about fresh water. We've mm -hmm. just spent a couple of C one thirties up there to help them install various tanks and things that um, the, their 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 groundwater is saline. So. It's starting, you know, and we're going to So it's shouldn't, happen. shouldn't we just bring in a lot more refugees then and maybe not quibble over whether they're political refugees or economic ref refugees? I mean, you, you say they 
bring, out, bring about benefits to our society, I mean, surely we could increase the 750 quota to, you know, by 10. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know the, I don't know the, uh, all, all the cost things yeah. around it. We, we certainly need to do a whole lot more for our refugees. Yeah. Um, if you go out to the Mangari Centre there, it's yeah. um, where, they, where they, the first place they hit the ground, um, it's, it's not, not terrific, and the, the English uh, teaching and language and stuff that they get is, is pretty minimal. So right. there's a, and it's one thing that we've actually put in our policy, which I'm really pleased about, that we've, we've upped the English um, teaching and, right. and, and, and tuition and also the, the ability to go into, into a tertiary institution and put a million dollars aside for helping refugees get... Because as soon as they get into that sort of role and go on to a tertiary education, then, then it starts to filter down right through the community. It's, it's fantastic yeah, to watch, actually. There's another thing that happened... Well, because my, my mum used to run the adult community education programme in Christchurch, and the abolition of that has meant that we refugee women used to go and hang out and make quilts and learn English. They can't do that anymore, so... It's, I, I just think this is such a tragedy for 13 and a half million dollars. I mean, and we've just mm. said we'd, we would put it back. I mean, I mean, the same thing for you. My, I went to one of the local high schools the other, um, a couple of year ago uh, before it all got, and there was 10 or 12 people doing Italian cooking. Now everybody would say that's what a complete that was, waste. What a, what a complete example, waste of money. Until we actually started talking to these people, and 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 two thirds of them were Asian women. And I said, well, why are you here? And she, they said. Well, look, I look, we look after kids during the day. This is the only time I get out. This is the only time I've ever I've, I've got in touch with some of these people that I've never met before. Um, and two or three of them were wanting to go on and do accountancy courses afterwards. So it just seems to me that it is such a great way of, quite apart from skills, I mean, quite, such a great way of building community cohesion. At, mm. and, and if we were really smart, we would look at this model and say, this is a great model. It's getting people that have been out of school for such a long time back into schools again. And let's see how we can kind of staircase them into more formalised learning rather than say, let's throw it out because it's a waste of time. It it's not producing. Makes a bit energy. of that bridge you were talking about that miss, is missing between people. Exactly. It gives them the second chance to come back. And again, it, and it does it in a soft way. If you said, come and do, you know, uh, literacy, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that say, oh, no, 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 that sounds too much like school. Come in and do woodwork or you know welding and then they look and then they look around and say oh, actually I wouldn't mind doing that course over there and if you had form formalized it slightly more than that and said you know you're really good at welding and you have to use numbers in order to do that why don't you do this course over here then suddenly you've got a different model that will help people up rather than in a sense leave people out. Mm.